Hey everyone, I'm Greg and we're back at the Rockford Fosgate R&D Lab. Today we're going to show you how we installed an all new Stage 3 kit on a 2021 Polaris Razor. On our Razor, we went ahead and removed the roof so you can move the cameras easily in and out of the vehicle. This step is not necessary for your installation. Before you get started, it's always a good idea to disconnect the power when working on any electronics. On the two-up models, the battery is located under the driver's seat, but on the four-up models, it's under the rear seat on the driver's side. You want to remove all the seats for the Ride Command kits, and to do this, pull up on the rear latch, tilt forward, and lift. Once you've located the battery, you can disconnect the negative terminal using a 13 millimeter socket. All right, to disassemble the upper dash, start with removing the hood, then use a push pin puller or a plastic pry tool on the two push pins that connect the upper pocket. Now remove the four T40 torque screws and pull the dash. Okay, let's move to the center console. There'll be a mix of T40 torque screws and push pins that will need to be removed. Once those are out, you can unseat the rubber gaskets around the seat belts and the shifter, lift the console up and out of the car. For the lower dash assembly, let's remove the passenger grab bar. Now you have four screws holding the dash and two push pins located in the upper cargo pocket. Disconnect the ignition and any other gauges, switches, or accessories you may have hooked up. Now pull the dash from the car. Lastly, you use a 10 millimeter socket with an extension to remove the glove box. Now if your car comes with a stock audio system, you want to remove the stock amplifier and remount the dynamics module. Okay, now you're ready to install the main power harness. You're going to run down the radiator compartment, go underneath the floorboard and through the center console, and then back to the battery. Be sure that you manage your wiring and don't wrap around any moving parts while routing your cables. Alright, with that done, you're ready to feed the wiring back through the factory grommet and into the upper dash area. Be sure to leave enough slack here for any connections that need to be made. This is where you'll run the power line for the Ride Command Interface and the Color Optics Controller. Feed the cables through the grommet from the inside of the car and up to the distribution block. Using a 3 8 inch nut driver, connect the red wire to the accessory power and the black wire to the ground. Now you want to connect the interface to the Ride Command. You'll find the main cluster holding Amp 1 under the dash and Amp 3 is located behind the steering column. Okay, now we're ready to talk about the subwoofer enclosure. This is a cool design that's ported for a higher bass output. But if you like a sealed box for a tighter bass response, we include this port cap, which is also good for you wet weather riders. You'll notice that the subwoofer has two settings for the ohm load. For this kit, you want to ensure that it's set for four ohms. We're ready to install the subwoofer. Attach the two Deutsch connectors. 
The two pin is for your sound and the four pin will connect to your new color optics controller. Now you can load the subwoofer into the enclosure using the supplied hardware and Allen bit. Your subwoofer is going to replace your glove box, so we'll use the existing hardware to mount to the crossbar as well as two additional mounting holes that line up with factory standoffs on the firewall. Now slide the enclosure into place and secure it with the existing two screws. You want to keep these loose so you can line up the two mounting holes on the bottom, secure those with the provided hardware, and then tighten all four mounting locations. Now once the enclosure is mounted, we'll go ahead and plug in the harness and run it to the center area. Okay, now that you're done with that, you're ready to install the lower speaker pods. Start by replacing the factory bolt with the provided threaded standoff using a half inch socket. Then use the provided driver and hardware to mount the enclosure to the standoff and the floorboard. Be sure all three mounting locations are tight. Once they're installed, we'll just go ahead and route our speaker harnesses up to the center area. Now you're ready to install your speakers. Connect the speaker by attaching the red wire to the positive spade lug and the black wire to the negative spade lug. And then plug in the four pin Deutsch connector for the color optics feature. Position the speaker in the number three hole on the pod. Secure it using the included three millimeter bit and supplied hardware. Okay, now we're ready to install our amplifier plate to the dash. Start by routing your harnesses to the appropriate size of the amplifier mount, keeping the output wires and the power plug on the same side. You'll notice this kit comes with two plates. The larger one is for the 2014 through 18 razors, and the smaller one's for the 2019 and newer models. If your car does not have a Dynamics module, you want to pre-thread these holes. If you do have the Dynamics module, then this will mount right over the existing plate. You're going to mount the amplifier plate to the subframe crossbar using provided hardware. We're going to do that using two T40 screws and then the short screw attaches to the subwoofer enclosure. Okay, at this point you're ready to mount your amplifier using the provided hardware. Okay, now you're ready to wire your amplifier. These new M5 series amplifiers are equipped with our new preset technology, as well as pigtails for your connections. Start with your output cables. Your front goes to the speakers, and your rear output goes to the subwoofer. And now you connect your power plug. Once that's done, we'll move to the input from your ride command harness. Plug in the front to the pigtail labeled front, and the subwoofer to the pigtail labeled rear. Now we can connect the blue remote turn on wire. Match your speaker locations to the proper cables and attach. All right, you're ready to install the new color optics controller. This is a Bluetooth device that will allow you to remotely access the lighting features through the RF Connect app. We'll start by connecting the power cable and then attach the waterproof connectors to the speaker cables. You can utilize any of the eight color optics plugs provided. Now is a great time to go through and secure your wiring runs. Be sure that you have the proper clearances where needed and any loose slack is tied off.
Okay, now that you've got that done, you're ready to start the reassembly process. Pop the lower dash in place and make your electrical connections for the ignition, lighting, and any other accessories. This is when we recommend you connect your battery and test your new Rockford Fosgate audio system. Okay, now that you tested the system, it's time to get the Razor back together and out onto the trails. All right, as you can see, the installation came together pretty easily. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact our technical support. They can be reached at 1-800-669-9899, Monday through Friday. Until next time, I'm Greg, and we'll see you again soon.